When Japan finally surrendered at the end of World War II, the U.S. Navy made a significant discovery. 24 submarines, some of which boasted remarkable technology. These submarines were taken to Sasebo Bay for study. However, the situation took a concerning turn when the U.S. military received a warning. The Soviets were intent on acquiring the sophisticated innovations on board these vessels. Faced with this threat, the U.S. Navy devised a plan called Operation Road's End. It decided to take most of the submarines to a remote location known as Point Deep Six, well out of the Soviets' reach. There, the submarines were loaded with special explosive charges and sent where the new enemies couldn't access them. Nonetheless, four of these submarines escaped their sister's fate and were instead taken to Hawaii for further inspection. Among these, two stood out as extraordinary examples of a unique kind of vessel, the I-400-class submarine carriers. Exploring history's most jaw-dropping war machines, like Japan's mythical submarine aircraft carrier, is not just a passion. It's an obsession here at Dark Seas. Now you can actually command these military hardware and dive into epic naval combat yourself in War Thunder, the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. War Thunder marries heart-racing excitement with uncompromising historical precision, like stepping into a time machine where every rivet and engine is recreated with painstaking detail and jaw-dropping next-gen graphics and pristine 4K resolution, thrusting you right into the thick of history's greatest battles. Its arsenal boasts an overwhelming lineup of over 2,000 meticulously crafted tanks, warplanes, and helicopters. Immerse yourself in intense player-versus-player -player combat that blurs the line between game and reality. Moreover, you can transform history's most legendary combat vehicles into personalized engines of destruction. Drape your vehicles in a wide variety of camouflages, decorate your war machines with historical insignias, and intimidate your foes with unique 3D decorations that scream your personal war cry across the battlefield. Are you ready to rewrite history? Steer legendary combat machines into battle by hitting the link in the description below and joining War Thunder for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. And for new players across all platforms, or those returning after six months, an exclusive treasure chest awaits. Use our special link for a massive bonus pack featuring multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, an exclusive 3D decorator for your vehicles, and a whole arsenal of extras. An Odyssey. In the early 20th century, several countries set out to create submarine aircraft carriers. The idea was to bring seaplanes closer to the action, allowing pilots to gather information about enemy ships without the need for a land base. Germany took the first steps during World War I, modifying seaplanes to carry bombs. In December 1915, one example successfully flew across the English Channel, dropping bombs near London. However, the aircraft had limited range. Inspired by this success, the Germans developed a plan to launch seaplanes from submerged submarines to increase their range. As early as January 1915, U-12 achieved a successful launch of a seaplane off its deck in Zeebrugge. The seaplane was secured on the submarine's deck, carried for 30 miles, and then released to float off. The plane took off, flew undetected along the British coast, and returned to Zeebrugge. Despite this achievement, further improvements were necessary. While Germany's plans were ultimately rejected by the naval command, the British and the United States also experimented with aircraft carrying submarines. The British modified HMS E-22 to launch seaplanes, but they were exposed in the deck and couldn't be launched if the submarine submerged. The United States purchased seaplanes from Germany for evaluation and conducted tests aboard the S-1 submarine. However, Difficulties in launching and recovering the aircraft, along with their limited military value, led to a loss of interest in the concept. In contrast, the French submarine Surcouf and the Italian submarine Ettore Fiera Mosca were equipped with hangars for reconnaissance seaplanes. Surcouf, designed as an underwater cruiser, had a hangar, torpedo tubes, and a twin-gun turret. Ettore Fiera Mosca had a waterproof hangar, and suitable aircraft were ordered. However, the program was ultimately cancelled and the hangar was removed before the submarine's delivery. Missing the boat. Due to the constraints imposed by the Washington Naval Treaty and the loss of HMS M1 in 1925, the Royal Navy faced challenges. In consequence, they were compelled to repurpose their remaining M-class submarines. Among them was the M2, which underwent a remarkable transformation. 
She was retrofitted with a watertight hangar that housed a small seaplane known as the Parnal Peto. Then, in October 1928, a hydraulic catapult was installed on the M2, enabling the seaplane to be launched from a ramp on the submarine's forward casing. Consequently, the submarine and her aircraft could carry out reconnaissance missions ahead of the fleet, diving underwater to evade potential threats. Equipped with folding wings, the seaplane would be catapulted off the deck runway, and upon completing its mission, would be hoisted back on board using a specially designed crane. The crew of the M2 took great pride in their ability to swiftly launch the seaplane and constantly aimed to improve their speed record. Sadly, their desire for speed ultimately led to their demise. During exercises off Portland on January 26, 1932, the M2 submerged at 10.11 a.m. and never resurfaced. On January 29th, the Hope was officially abandoned for the 60 crew members aboard. After eight days of searching, divers made a tragic discovery. The hangar door was open, with the seaplane still inside, suggesting it had been opened while the submarine was submerged. Attempts were made to salvage the plane, but despite the involvement of 26 Royal Navy divers conducting 1,500 dives over 11 months, the Admiralty eventually admitted defeat. On December 8, 1932, the M2 was left to rest permanently on the seabed off Portland, marking the end of the Royal Navy's experiment with aircraft launching submarines. A bolt from the blue. By the late 1930s, the Kriegsmarine embarked on an endeavor that led to the order of four cruiser U-boats in 1939, which were twice the size of any existing U-boat at the time. These submarines were designed to accommodate a single Arado AR-231 float plane. Yet, the outbreak of war canceled the ambitious project. Nevertheless, certain U-boats were equipped with a unique aircraft called the Foca Aquiles FA-330. This rotary-wing kite, also known as a gyroglider or rotor kite, was particularly used in the long-range U-boat Type 9D2 Monson employed by the Germans. The Germans had also intended to utilize another aircraft, the Flechner FL-282A Calibri, a compact helicopter designed for a single pilot. However, the FL-282 Calibri was never actually deployed on a German submarine. In contrast, the concept was extensively employed by the Japanese, with a total of 47 submarines capable of carrying seaplanes, the most common variant being Type B. Notable examples include submarines like I-15 and I-17, which boasted impressive speed and range. These submarines featured a hangar in front of the conning tower to house a Yokosuka E-14Y seaplane. The effectiveness of the Japanese aircraft carrying submarines was demonstrated in various engagements, for instance, in 1942, the USS Saratoga aircraft carrier was damaged by I-26, while I-19 successfully struck USS Wasp with torpedoes, causing severe damage to the vessel and other nearby ships. Also, in an extraordinary event in September 1942, I-25 carried out the only aerial bombings on the United States, dropping incendiary bombs near Brookings, Oregon. Another notable type of submarine was the AM submarine, which was larger and could accommodate two seaplanes. Although they possessed impressive range and speed, their underwater performance was compromised, rendering them vulnerable to attacks. USS Lawrence C. Taylor, an aircraft from USS Anzio, sank the I-13 in July 1945, while the I-14 surrendered at sea and was later scrapped after the war. But that would not be the case with the Sentoku type. It's a small world. The Sentoku type, or I-400 class submarines, held the title of the largest submarines ever built until the 1960s, when nuclear ballistic missile submarines emerged. Designed by Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto, these submarines were intended to form a fleet of 18 examples, but ultimately only three were constructed, I-400, I-401, and I-402. These immense submarines displaced 6,500 tons and stretched over 400 feet in length, three times the size of regular submarines. Their unique figure eight hull design provided added strength to support an on-deck hangar. The primary strategy of the I-400 class submarines was to surface, launch their planes, and swiftly submerge again to avoid detection. Despite this tactic, they were equipped with three anti-aircraft guns, 
a large deck gun, and eight torpedo tubes, capable of firing the infamous Long Lance torpedoes. In addition, they feature radar, periscopes, demagnetization cables, and an anechoic coating to minimize detection by enemy forces. Each submarine had the capacity to carry three specially designed Ceyron aircraft. The Aichi M6A, armed with a 1,760-pound bomb load, could travel 650 miles at a speed of 360 miles per hour. The aircraft's wings, horizontal stabilizers, and top of the vertical stabilizer were foldable to fit in the hangar, reducing the overall profile. With a crew of four, the submarines could prepare and launch all three aircraft within 45 minutes using a 120-foot catapult on the foredeck. While most Japanese submarine aircraft carriers could only accommodate one or two aircraft, the I-400-class submarines boasted an impressive capacity to carry three. Powered by four 3,000-horsepower engines, these submarines could carry enough fuel to circumnavigate the globe one and a half times, granting them the extraordinary range to go anywhere in the world and back, not to mention to reach the United States from either direction. Lockstep. As the Japanese faced mounting setbacks, Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto, the commander-in-chief of the Japanese Combined Fleet, devised a daring plan to strike key American cities, including New York and Washington, D.C. To achieve this audacious objective, Captain Chikao Yamamoto and Commander Yasuo Fujimori proposed employing a secret submarine attack called Sentoku to disable the locks of the Panama Canal. By severing American supply lines to the Pacific Ocean and disrupting the transfer of U.S. ships, the Japanese hoped to gain a significant strategic advantage. Initially, the Japanese acknowledged the presence of American fortifications guarding the canal on both sides. However, as the war progressed and Japan's prospects dimmed, security around the canal gradually weakened. Intelligence gathering and interviews with American prisoners of war revealed that defensive measures had been compromised, making the feasibility of the plan more apparent. Executing the attack required a team of Japanese engineers to meticulously study blueprints and documents obtained from a former canal construction worker. Through their analysis, they identified the vulnerability of the Miraflores locks on the Pacific side to aerial bombing. However, they concluded that targeting the Gatun locks on the Atlantic side would inflict more substantial damage. The engineers estimated that a successful attack on the locks would render the canal unusable for at least six months. Commander Fujimori requested modifications to two fleet submarines, I-13 and I-14, to facilitate the operation enabling them to carry additional Ceyron aircraft. This increased the number of available planes to a total of 10. The plan involved launching the Ceyrons from the submarines off the coast of Ecuador, flying at high altitudes across Colombia, and ultimately approaching the canal locks at dawn. After completing their bombing runs, the Ceyrons would return to rendezvous with the submarines for retrieval. By April 1945, a pivotal decision was made. The Ceyron pilots would employ kamikaze tactics, sacrificing themselves by ramming the gates of the canal instead of conventional bombing. Training and preparations ensued, including the construction of a wooden model of the Gatun Lux gate for practice sessions. By June, all four aircraft-carrying submarines had reached the designated location. A storm in a teacup. Before the Japanese could strike, Okinawa fell, rendering the home islands vulnerable to an Allied attack. In August 1945, Japan faced an imminent assault at its heart. To counter this threat, a plan was devised to launch an attack on the Uliti Atoll, where 15 American aircraft carriers had gathered. The Japanese naval general staff believed that taking direct and immediate action was necessary to halt the American advance, considering the previous Panama Canal attack to have had little impact on the outcome of the war. The attack on Uliti Atoll was divided into two phases. The first phase, codenamed Hikari, or Light, involved the transportation of four C-6N Sayun reconnaissance aircraft to Truk Island by I-13 and I-14. Once there, the Sayuns would be reassembled and flown over Uliti to confirm the presence of American carriers. After completing this delivery, submarines I-13 and I-14 would proceed to Hong Kong where they would receive four Ceyron attack planes before continuing to Singapore for further operations. 
the second phase, codenamed Arashi, or Storm, would see submarines I-400 and I-401 launching six Seiran aircraft on a kamikaze mission against the American carriers. The Seirans, armed with bombs, would fly at low altitudes to avoid radar detection and American fighter patrols. Nevertheless, before the Eliti attack could be launched, Japan surrendered. On August 22, 1945, the crews of the submarines received orders to destroy their weapons. During the surrender, when the American destroyer Blue encountered the I-400 submarine, its sheer size astonished the U.S. crew, as she was significantly larger than any American submarine at the time. Thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring our video. To discover more impressive combat vehicles that change the fate of history, join us by hitting the link below and uncovering the large bonus pack for new players that includes vehicles, boosters, and more.